Hey everyone, it's Eric Johnson from Airte Throws Nation, and in this quick tip, what we're going to discuss are common issues that cause foot fouls or coming out of the front of the circle, especially with non or sorry with reversing uh, throwers. So whether it's the uh, rotational shot, the discus, or even the glide. One, we're going to avoid looking at the throw. So in this picture, what we're going to do, or in this video, we're going to look through a series of throwers, and we're going to pay attention to the two things that they don't do. One, good throwers, you, you don't want to look at the throw until you fully regain control of your recovery. And the second thing you want to do is understand that the path of <clears throat> the block leg after you've come through the reverse has to elevate typically so it's going to be a combination depending on the thrower the style is going to be a little different but it's very very similar pretty much across the board failure to elevate that block leg will uh, make your center mass oftentimes continue to move forward the the lifting and elevation will keep you in the ring so if we look here at uh, Malachowski we'll look at him really chase it you notice how his head's away and at this point here's what we're looking at the elevation of the uh, the left leg coming up and you're going to notice that knee is actually above the hip. When he does this, you notice that's going to pull him to the ball of the foot and that's going to help pull him back into the circle. So when you kind of roll up and this leg extends, that helps kind of pull you back in. You notice he's here and now he'll look at the throw because he's fully has control of the throw. So if we look now and we look at the top angle, this is a great um, shot to be able to see exactly what I'm talking about. So you're going to see one, he's not, he's not going to be coming around looking, but look at that elevation. So when you looked at the throw from <clears throat> um, a level standpoint, you could see that the, the knee was elevated, but you didn't realize that the leg is extended away this much. So it's elevated up and extended away out and you notice that it's pulling his heel is back over the center of the ring that's pulling him back into the ring so now he's up on the ball now he can kind of pull everything around and now that he's got control now he'll look at the throw but what a lot of young throwers are doing is right now their heads flipping around as they're trying to uh, regain control and if you looked at the throw at this point you're gonna notice his eyes it's a little tough to see but he's looking down he's not trying to look he comes around he knows he has control and now he's gonna look at his throw alright so that's uh, a real simple tip is for elevating that leg we'll look at a couple other throwers so you can kind of see some examples and you'll see how young throwers tend not to get this nice big extension and elevation which is gonna help you stay in the circle so let's take a peek at Turner Washington. Uh, Turner Washington is the national leader this year in high school. Uh, dad was three-time Olympian and 99 world champion, one of the greatest throwers ever. And here, watch him hit the throw and watch the path of the left. Now his style is a little different, um, very efficient, but you see that elevation up. So again, that's you can see pulling him back into the circle, up onto the toe. He regains control. You see him here not trying to look at the throw. Now look at him. He's still not looking at the throw, not looking at the throw, and now he's get, regained control. So now he's going to watch where his discus is. Big problem you see with a lot of young throwers is right here. They go, oh, that felt good, and they're looking at the throw. And while you're trying to regain control, you're going to get that momentum is going to help you, is, is most likely going to take over, and it's going to pull you out of the circle. So you, those are your two primary things that you want to be most concerned with. So here's an example of one of our um, online members and athlete who's come to train with me multiple times. And there's some other things going on here when we start looking at our throwing chain reaction. He's setting up some good positions. The left arm path um, starts to interfere with his ability to rotate as efficiently into the center. So it's going to create a little bit of shift. But one of the things is we always want to keep those shoulders level. But as he starts to reverse, Okay, kind of pulled away a little too much. And as he's watch him start to look right there, he's not fully in control and watch the height of the block leg. Notice that knee isn't really getting above his hip. If that knee elevates up to the hip height, that's gonna keep him here. And now he starts to look and that's gonna pull him forward. You see that extra little step forward. And that's a combination of his head looking and the knee 
here not high enough. If that knee's high enough, it keeps them rotating around instead of kind of jumping forward. So if you're practicing this, practicing in training to be conscious of that path and so that you counterbalance through the delivery, you're going to be uh, a little more comfortable when it comes meet time and, you, and it's going to become a habit that's actually pretty easy to do. And so if you, if you're, again, if you're focused on it, you're most likely going to uh, help yourself pre prevent those extra little bit of fouls. And a lot of my young athletes, I have to cue them not to look at the throw right there, looking at the throw. So watch him step forward, right? And he should be fully regaining control before he's looking at it. And that makes a huge difference for you. So here's a look at one more um, high school thrower. This is again from another one of our uh, online member coaches uh, in Southern California. And watch this athlete, he does some really nice stuff. He comes through the throw. He's here, he's got pretty good control. Now watch, but watch the path of the left leg. It's good and it's good extension, but if he lifts it even a little higher, that's gonna keep him, he's gotta keep it up a little longer and that would help keep him into the ring. So he lifts and then it starts to come down too early. If that stays up through that point, he'd stay on the toe and that would pull him back into the circle. So let's take a look at uh, what it looks like in the rotational shot. Here's Ryan Krauser hitting his uh, Olympic record um, throw. Now watch how high that the knee is, is at the uh, hip height and the foot is fully extended back. That's going to look at how high it comes up. It keeps coming up. So as he reverses in, you can see how he very comfortably has regained control. It's tilted his body back into the ring and he holds the ring position no problem. So now if we take a peek at a glider, let's look at Valerie Adams, one of the greatest uh, female shot putters in world history, if not maybe the greatest. Um, again, different finish style for gliders, right? It's not nearly as rotational, it's very linear, but what you're gonna notice is that elevation and kind of bend at this point that again is forcing the thrower up more onto the toe, keeping the center of mass kind of moving back in. You're gonna see a little bit different style for a glider, especially with Valerie Adams, but you can see exactly that elevation of the block leg as they come through is helping pull the athlete back into them. And finally, what we'll look at is David Storrell. Um, watch the uh, very linear, look at again how high, so you're gonna see a lot of times that uh, kind of this <clears throat> elevated block leg is gonna tilt that body. Again, uh, glider still very elevated. You see the high knee pulling it in, that's pulling his body back in. So he's chasing and as you lift that block leg, that's going to help you stay in the circle. So the point is, is you looked at a handful of discus throwers, uh, even rotational shot putter, and looking at the glide. Again, that elevation, it's a simple thing. Of course, there are many variables that go into throwing farther, and we talk and we teach the throwing chain reaction, and everything is predicated on those first pillars, what you're setting up. Um, how you're going to enter into the middle of the ring is going to make a huge difference whether or not you foul. But um, one of the core attributes is that a lot of athletes I've seen at this point are sending out videos and they're very close. And the two, the two main details to really think about are don't look at the throw until you've regained control and elevate that block leg to help pull you back into the circle. Those are two simple things that a lot of, a lot of young throwers are missing that can really just help you... Uh, resolve a lot of those ticky tack uh, you know foot stepping on the uh, the ring type issues or just slow slightly having to step out of the circle so hopefully uh, these tips help and be sure to subscribe and thanks for watching